محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین و اشہدو ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له و اشہدو ان محمدا عبده و رسوله صل اللہ علیہ و آلہ و صحبہ اجمعین اما بعد Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to this new episode of Ask Huda, coming to you live from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. And as we are anticipating your phone calls, we have few pending messages and questions from the email. Salma sent us a question saying, is it permissible to polish our nails in any color if non mahram does not see us? So Salma is asking about the ruling on wearing nail polish and selecting any random color of choice. Would that be permissible? Nowadays, it is unfortunate, but this habit of wearing nail polish has spread among the Muslim women. And I cannot give my preference as a man because this is not something that I'm wearing, alhamdulillah. In the beginning, this was a habit of the non-Muslims. It was a custom of the non-Muslims. So at the beginning, the women, so-called the pioneers who adopted it, were imitating the disbelievers in their customs and in their traditions. And they're sinful, and they were sinful for that reason, and Allah Azza wa would hold them to account. Nowadays, unfortunately, it is so spread that Muslims and non-Muslims alike are wearing it. My preference as an individual, I do not like nail polish, regardless of the color, especially when a woman has long fingernails and she puts reddish nail polish on it alongside with all the cosmetics on her face and the paintings. She looks like a monster who had just finished attacking its prey with fingernails and, and all red, etc. It, it, it's, I don't know, this is my own preference, but don't take my word for it. We are talking about Islamically. Nowadays, it, as stated earlier, most of women, Muslim women, wear this. So what's the ruling on it? Inshallah, it is permissible. This is the Islamic ru ruling. It is permissible, providing that no strangers male, non-mahram male, would see it. Why? Because this is a form of adornment. Some people like it. Some people would be lured into it or turned on by looking at it. So women must cover it. Secondly, of course, when she applies it, she cannot perform wudu afterwards. So she cannot pray afterwards. But if she is in the state of wudu and she puts it on, she can pray until she nullifies her wudu. Thirdly, when we come to the colors, now up till this moment, the colors are regular and normal among the Muslims. But when a woman comes and wears, for example, black nail polish, even among the non-Muslims, they will probably consider this to be like uh, uh, Satan worshippers. This is something repulsive. They do not accept it to be the norm. Though lots of punks and, and hard rockers wear it, males as well, but th this doesn't mean that we Muslims should follow their footsteps all the way. Secondly, the concept of nail polish nowadays has reached levels of extravagance. I have my nieces and some of my daughters sometimes, they spend hours doing one nail 
and you see some decoration on it and sometimes they uh, may draw a face or give it six or seven colors at the same time what is this is this part of adorning yourself and making yourself beautiful but this is following the footsteps of the disbelievers so I would not recommend it and if it is extravagance it becomes haram but if it is not and someone wastes her time doing this uh, just for the fun of it I would not say it's haram but we should have higher aspiration to things that would benefit us in this life and in the hereafter as well uh, Mubar from Iraq Muba Hi, what's the name Akhi? My name is Mubdir. Mubdir, yes, Akhi. Uh, what can I do for you? Mubdir. Yes. Uh, my question is, is boarding nullified purity? Is what? Uh, boarding. The air passing from uh, mouth. Oh, burping. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Any more questions? No, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Warakallah fiqh, akhi. Okay, brother, brother Bubjir from Iraq is asking about burping. When someone eats too much or drinks too much and then he passes uh, wind from his mouth, from his stomach. So he's burping. It, does it uh, affect the wudu? The answer is no. None of the scholars said that it affects your purity and there is a hadith which was authenticated by Ibn uh, uh, Hajar in uh, Fath al-Bari may Allah have mercy on him where a man burped in the presence of the Prophet and the Prophet told him to withhold his burping because the longest people to starve on the day of, uh, of the day of judgment are the longest to have full bellies uh, uh, on this earth, those who are most of the time full. So the act of burping in public is not something appropriate. It is bad manners and etiquette and one must avoid it, but again it has no impact on the validity of your uh, wudu nor even your prayer Sarah from Nigeria hello assalamu alaikum Sheikh. salam wa rahmatullah yeah please um, my question is um, Sheikh I'm having a cesarean section on Monday inshallah inshallah so what I'm asking is that um, I know um, I will not be able to fast for the month of Ramadan so I want to know um, can I um, feed um, some people during the period of Ramadan or I have to Back after okay. When I finished. Any more questions? That's my, no, that's my question. I will answer you, inshallah, Sarah. Uh -huh. Sarah's question is that she will not be able to fast the month of Ramadan due to a number of reasons. One, she is about to deliver, which means that it is difficult for her to fast if Ramadan is month is is. Um, Friday or Saturday and her due to have a cesarean operation on Monday so she will have uh, postnatal bleeding and also she would be breastfeeding so she's asking is it permissible for her to feed for these missed days of Ramadan the answer is no as long alhamdulillah as you are in a good health and you don't have um, an illness that's incurable a chronic illness and you're not too old and too weak to fast in this case you must fast as soon as these obstacles are removed that is the obstacle of pregnancy the obstacle of postnatal bleeding the obstacle of breastfeeding as soon as you are capable and fit to make up for the missed days of Ramadan without harming yourself or your child you have to do this and there's no feeding or expiation for that all what you have to do is just make a day uh, in return of a day and Allah Azzawajal knows best Layla says if a man 
so my hair by mistake without my intention what should I do how to repent first of all may Allah Azza wa Jal grant you great reward Layla for your concern and for your fear of exposing any of your body to non-mahrams or to strangers to see this is a characteristic that we lack nowadays among the Muslim women because for ages Muslim women were known to be conservative to be protective to be chaste to be modest no one can come and look at them and expose them in a, 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 a showroom they were always abiding by the Islamic attire until unfortunately these few decades ago for centuries they were like this only few decades ago Muslim women now are showing their flesh they're exposing their hair they're not abiding by the hijab and you, they don't care just turn on any news channel or any uh, TV program in Muslim countries and you will find shocking scenes so may Allah Azza preserve you and protect you if it was done unintentional whether he saw your hair saw your face saw your body this was unintentional you did not do anything wrong for him to see you in such a fashion there is no sin none whatsoever upon you didn't Allah Azza wa Jal say in the last verse of Surah Al-Baqarah رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَخِذْنَا إِن نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا O oh, my Lord, O oh Allah, do not burden us if we forget or we err, we make an error, we make a mistake. So what had happened was unintentional, hence there is nothing for you to do except ask Allah for forgiveness. Latifa from Saudi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What can I do for you? A uh, brother awesome. I, for years I have heard, uh, um, this goes back to what you've mentioned about wearing the wearing of nail polish. For many years I have heard that the scholars have said that it is uh, an Islamic. However, I have never yet heard a, any um, hadith or specific um, uh, ayat from Quran quoted in regard to this. And um, I would please, uh, uh, you know, appreciate if you could address that. And okay. let me also add that nowadays, they, if it is based on the fact that the water does not penetrate the nail, which is the basis upon which um, I, I've been told that the sheikhs say that it is un-Islamic, but nowadays they're making um, fingernail polish that is, um, you know, um, can be... Breathable. Can be breathable yeah, breathable thank you That's okay thank you I will answer you inshallah okay uh, ayat from Saudi Salam alaikum Salam uh, uh, I had a question um, regarding fasting uh, is it um, uh, are, is it not allowed to break your fast after you hear the first salon or I'm um, too sorry to start your your fast after you hear the first adhan. Um What I mean is if you're eating suhoor and the first adhan, it, uh starts, can you um, finish eating until the second adhan or do you have to stop at that? Okay. Any more questions? No, that's all. Okay. I will answer inshallah. Okay. Sister Latifa from Saudi Arabia asked more elaboration on the issue of wearing manicures or wearing uh, 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 in Arabic we call it manakir and subhanallah uh, um, in, in Arabic it is the word manakir which is used for nail polish it can also be translated into vice and evil in plural so it's like munkarat or munkar and it can be the plural of manakir as well so but this is beside the point she says that she has not uh, um, uh, found any reference in the Quran or in the Sunnah prohibiting nail polish. First of all, the issue of nail polish, I don't believe anyone said that it was mentioned in the Quran or in the Sunnah. But we have guidelines. And 
one of the guidelines is the hadith of Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him and with his father, where he said that the Prophet ﷺ said in a long hadith, I quote, وَمَنْ تَشَبَّهَ بِقَوْمٍ فَهُوْ مِنْهُمْ So this is the part that we are interested uh, in. Whoever imitates a people, then he is part of them. From this hadith and many other narrations, for example, when the Prophet ﷺ saw Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him and with his father, and the hadith is narrated in Sahih Imam Muslim. He saw him wearing two garments that were dyed with saffron. And this was known to be worn and used by the idol worshippers. So the Prophet was outraged when he saw this great companion wearing this. Look at the way he addressed him because he's his disciple, he's his student. He said to him, did your mother order you to wear this? Immediately, the man understood his fault. So he said, O Prophet of Allah, shall I wash them? The Prophet said, no, burn them. Washing them would have sufficed, but the Prophet Hassan wanted to make an example of wasting such money by burning it so that people would know how severe the sin was. And there are so many examples that I could give and relate to you, but this is not the time. If you look at the Sharia ah as a whole, you will see that the Prophet orders us والسلام, in so many incidents to go against the Jews and the Christians and the disbelievers. So in breaking your fast, you have to make it as quick as possible, go against them. In postponing and delaying your pre-dawn meal as much as possible, which will bring us to Ayat's question. This is also recommended as Sunnah, growing the beard to go against the Jews and the Christians and the fire worshippers. So many, this is not a time for that. In essence, we are told to go against them. So at the beginning, Muslim women did not have this costume and this custom in them. So wearing nail polish was not part of their uh, uh, um, attire. Likewise, if I were to come tomorrow and put on a Texan hat and I just walk, you know, with a big Texan hat or a sombrero from Mexico or if one of the women would wear uh, um, one uh, of the custom dresses of Japan, for example, the kimono, I think it's called. And she could barely walk with, with, with open steps wearing it. And she says, I like the dress. See, listen, this is not permissible because it's imitating the kuffar. So this is a concept where Islam is based on to have your identity and to avoid such conflict. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows uh, best. Uh, Rashid from Holland. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu Shaykh, how are you? I am fine. Hayak Allah. I have a question. It's about uh, uh, the body. Uh, I have a question. When a person has a, a meal, the body after that uh, absorbs all the nutrition and gets rid of what is not necessary. Uh, is that because the body is inspired by Allah to do so? Or is it Allah that does the work? Wallahi, this is too philosophical for me, uh, Rashid. <laughs> how would I know well, how your body reacts? Everything akhi, in this universe cannot move an inch or even less without the permission of, and, and the instruction of Allah Azza wa Jal. So to say that, okay, when I blink, when someone claps his hands in front of my face, am I doing this out of choice or is it bec because my body is protecting my eyes or is it Allah doing this is way too philosophical for me everything is done by Allah Azza wa Jal now what my body does whether he takes the good nutrition or the bad I have to ask my body but I cannot communicate with it because we're not at, at good terms at the moment so I hope this answers your question any more questions Barakallah feek akhi Abdullah from Iraq Assalamu alaikum Sheikh Assalamu alaikum 
How are you? Hi, حياك الله اخي. I'm fine. Zak الله. I have a, I have a small question. Yes. Sir. What is the ruling on holding pizza while you are praying in the masjid? You know, we have a, a checkpoint near our masjid, and sometimes when the policeman come to pray at the masjid, they don't put down their pizza. What is the ruling on that? Uh, on that? Uh, does the pray valid or not? Are you asking about reserving places in the front row? No, no. Holding pizzas while you are praying in the masjid. When the policeman come to masjid and hold the, don't, uh, don't uh, put down their pizzas. Why Does do they pray valid or not? Yani are they uh, uh, arresting them? Yes, yes. Okay. Jazakallah. Yeah. Uh, Latifa's second question uh, was about what they call the breathable uh, nail polish. So about a couple of years ago, there's this company that says that we've produced uh, a special form of material that allows water to go inside um, its small particles, and this would permit a woman uh, uh, to do wudu while wearing her special uh, nail polish, and some of them they call it Islamic nail polish, and the word Islamic is now a pre, uh, 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 it's a word that is attached to anything you want. So you have a, a Islamic banking, you have Islamic food, halal food, which is halal, definitely Islamic banking exists, but not to the extent to have this as a cheap label and just put Islamic on whatever you want. So you will have tomorrow Islamic nasheed, Islamic songs. You have a, 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 an artist, nasheed artist, on the piano or playing the violin or his guitar, and he's saying this Islamic nasheed. And then you have Islamic dancing. And who knows uh, uh, what will the future hold for us. Uh, you see on uh, um, these got talents, countries got talents in in, in Southeast Asia. I've seen Muslim women with hijab dancing and playing the music and this is Islam? You kidding me? This is the new liberal Islam that they're promoting in the in the region? When you have such people who are so far away from Islam and they would like to justify their sins by claiming that it's Islamic. This is nonsense. So there is nothing as Islamic nail polish. Now, this particular company or brand that claims that it makes wudu permissible, this is not true. Because as it sticks to your finger, and there's a layer, it's not a color. If it's a color like henna, there's no problem. But when there's a layer, even if you claim that water goes through it, making it wet does not suffice. The water has to run. Making it moist does not suffice. Likewise, if I put my hands over a steamer and the steam is coming out and I just do this and khalas, I've, I've, commit, I've performed wudu because it's moist? No, this does not uh, work this way and Allah knows best. Ayat, her question is very essential for our um, issue because now Ramadan is right uh, at the corner. So she says, must I refrain from eating and drinking when I hear the first adhan? Or can I eat until the second adhan? And some people would think, hmm, what kind of two adhans? For f we have only one adhan. No. For Fajr prayer, the sunnah is to have two adhans. The adhan in Arabic means the call to prayer. So when the Mu'addin says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, this is called Adhan. So in all the other four prayers, in the, in the noon, in the afternoon, the, e the, the sunset, and the evening, we have one Adhan. And then a gap, and then just before the prayer is conducted, we have what is known as Iqama. But Fajr is a, specific, it's a special case. We have two Adhans. The first Adhan does not allow you to pray ayat. So if you hear the first adhan, no one prays because Fajr has not broken yet. Then why do we give the first adhan? The first adhan is given as a reminder. So if you're praying night prayer and you hear the first adhan, you, you remember, oh, the second adhan, which is Fajr time, is close. I have to pray my witr and conclude my prayer. And if you're asleep and you want to fast the following day and you hear the first adhan, you wake up. 
and you have your pre-meal, uh, uh, pre-dawn meal. This means that the first adhan is just a reminder. And that is why we do not say in it, As-salatu khayrun min an Now you can eat and drink until the second adhan is called. And this what inaugurates, this what uh, uh, identifies or tells you that now is the break of dawn. Now you can pray if you wish to pray Fajr prayer. And now you must refrain from eating and drinking and the, the rest of things that nullify your fasting. So I hope this clarifies it a little bit. We have a short break. Stay tuned. And inshallah, we'll be right back. Allah, la ilaha We welcome you, month we all adore. We pray for happiness. If you are not positive, you cannot motivate. Absolutely. If you are not positive, you cannot recognize. You cannot even look for the good things. Absolutely. Unless it is in your mm. heart, you mm. cannot practice it and exercise it with other people. <coughs> the meaning of the word La ilaha illallah to everyone, to all the people who are around him. Right. As many people as he can. So this is the mission. Mm -hmm. But this concept solves many problems. Yes. Whenever you visit a place that the Prophet Muhammad is sitting in, mm. if you don't know him, you will never be able to say that this is Prophet Muhammad or this is Prophet Muhammad. Tell me about a person in this world who does not need mercy. Hmm. Mercy is a key way of or course. a key word for healing the hearts of human beings. What happens is they get so many rejections, but they feel so bad about themselves. They don't know that what's been rejected now is your current skills, your current experience, which by time and effort can develop. Yeah. Temporarily, you are going to you are doing this job, so perfect it. And this is part of our great religion, is perfection. Mm. Perhaps mm. there is another chapter about this. Perfect right. your work. Give mm -hmm. the right to the job that you have. Ramadan, welcome holy month, Ramadan, Ahlan Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Parenting and child education set forth challenges and opportunities for parents, teachers, and children to make up a successful society. Do our schools teach critical thinking properly? Do our children have the necessary skills growing up to make proper decisions that they'll need in the workforce? Do parents and teachers speak the same language? For all this and more, join me, Abdul Azim Saeed, and guest Dr. Mamdouh Muhammad, an expert in education, in our special new series, Back to Basics. Stay tuned, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Abdullah from uh, uh, Iraq asked a, quite a weird question. If someone is in congregation in masjid and he is arrested or abducted while performing prayer, is his prayer valid? This is, this can't be happening in a masjid. Yani people don't have any respect, let alone fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, to at least wait until the prayer is over. So such people who barge in to, into masjids to make such abductions or arrests definitely don't have uh, a glimpse of Iman in their hearts. But for a worshiper, if you are praying and someone by force takes you away, this of course voids your salat because the moment you are turned away from the qibla, the moment you're walking away or struggling or fighting with them, anyone who looks at you says, 
that you are not praying. So the essence of prayer is gone now, and hence you have to pray again if you get a chance to do that. May Allah Azza wa Jal make life easy for our Sunni brothers in Iraq, and may Allah Azza wa Jal give them honor and restore their uh, uh, empowerment back again, inshallah. Sarah from Bahrain. Salam alaikum. Salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, I had three questions, Sheikh. Yes. The first one is, uh, the, uh, I heard that uh, the poor people entered paradise 500 years before rich people. Are they group of poor or individual poor? That is the first question. The second question is, from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Ummah, there is 70,000 people will go to Jannah without asking any question. Who are they? What they did to reach for that? And the third one, I have four or five personal questions to ask from you, but I am not using email since internet. I am not using at all. So can I call you personally? If yes, how can I get your number, telephone number? You can get my... Um a mobile number, I think it's on Twitter, Facebook, on my website, and also the brothers, in inshallah, uh -huh. will, will provide you with my mobile number, but we cannot have WhatsApp um, phone calls in Saudi Arabia. So you have to call me through uh, the direct line, inshallah, and the brothers will give you the mobile, inshallah. Uh, Abu Yusuf from Saudi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. كل سنة طيب كل عام تخير شيخ وأنت بكذا بخير كذلك سلام شيخ بارك الله فيك أخي أيه شيخ I have couple of questions yes I would like to ask you if a person who owns a flat he was working somewhere he lost his job due to stroke he had a stroke on the on his face or he has he became a patient from four five months he is not attending attending his work he lost in a way he lost his job so is he a beneficiary for a zakat? Okay. And the second question is, some relatives, two brothers are working, two unmarried grown-up sisters are there. So are they also a beneficiary? Okay. For the, for the zakat. Third question, you, I have heard your programs a couple of times before, many times, in, shall, in fact, you said zakat is for nisab of 85 grams of gold. I have heard you many times, 24 karat gold. So we have to calculate the value of, of 24 karat or 21 or 22 or 18 carats. Which, which carat we have to calculate the zakat? Okay, any more questions? Six, no, that's all. Thank you very much. You're Allah welcome, Akhi. Barakallah feek. Okay, Sarah from Bahrain, she had three questions. Well, actually, there are two. So she says that in the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ says that I saw the poor from my ummah entering paradise 500 years before the rich. And the rich are at the gates of paradise being held accountable for where they earned and where they had spent their money. Not that they are sinful or going to hell. So she's saying, is this individual poor or as a whole? The answer is as a whole, because not every poor person qualifies to enter paradise. They might have sins that are beyond our imagination. Allah throws them in hell. And not every rich person would be held for 500 years until his accounts are settled, because some of them, as in your second question, might be admitted to paradise from the first uh, uh, second. So this is in general. As for her second hadith, the Prophet said, والسلام, there will be 70,000 of my ummah who will be admitted to paradise without accountability, nor prior punishment or torment. And he explained, alayhi salatu wasalam, that they are those who do not ask people to do ruqya for them, who do not believe in bad omens, and who do not cauterize 
themselves by using a, 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 a hot burning rod of metal and putting it in special places, and they have trust and total dependence on Allah Azza wa So this is their description. And the Prophet told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in another hadith that with every one of these 70,000, there is an additional 70,000, and you do the math. So Allah's favor upon us is great. May Allah make us uh, uh, all among them. Ajmal from Denmark. Hello, uh, Assalamu Alaikum, Shaykh. Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Shaykh, I have uh, two questions, uh, actually. Uh, uh, the one is regarding uh, my wife. Uh, and uh, when uh, she is uh, pregnant, uh, and the Ramadan is near, and she is feeding, the child is uh, two months. Uh, and when uh, uh, what is the ruling on this? Uh, should she get uh, give uh, the fidya? What's called the, the fidya? Okay. Or uh, when when she give the fidya, should she get back the qaza? Second question. And my second question: I am working for post office. Okay. And sometimes, very, very, very rarely, it comes like from a shop. I have to pick something, a package. And in that package that contains like wine or something else, that is uh, haram in our, uh, but I have to take it uh, and deliver it. Is that uh, halal risk or what okay. is the ruling on this? I will answer your question, inshallah. Okay, Abu Yusuf from Saudi Arabia, he is asking two questions on the same topic. So a person who is bankrupt, who lost his job for any reason, but he owns an apartment. It, does he qualify to receive zakat money? And his siblings, whether they're working or not, do they qualify to receive zakat money? Akhi, don't burden yourself, especially with relatives, because whenever we have zakat money, we tend to look at our sisters, our cousins, our close relatives to give them th the zakat, or our close friends. And sometimes we tend to bend the rules a little bit until it breaks. So what is the ruling? You, as mentioned in verse 60, chapter 9, that zakat can be given only to eight categories. The first two categories are the poor and the needy. So if this owner of a flat is classified as poor, he's not because he's got a flat but he's classified as needy because he does not have what suffices his needs. So if he is classified as needy, he has no savings, no income, and at the middle of the month, he needs money for essential things such as medication, tuition for the children, food, etc., and he is unable to uh, uh, afford that, he is a recipient of zakat. Likewise, your, your, your siblings, if they fit the description, then yes, you can give them from the zakat. Abu Bakr from Libya. Okay, salam alaikum, Sheikh. Salam to barakatuh. Okay, please, Sheikh, I have one question I have to ask. Yes, Akhi. Okay, uh, if a Christian man, please, if a Christian man slaughters a meat or slaughters any or kill any animal, can you eat? Because some of the scholars, they say, if a good Christian kills a meat or slaughters a meat, you can eat. Okay. They and say because they say if you read the Surah Quran chapter five, verses number three, according to that ayah, if a Christian man kills a meat, you can eat. But okay. I don't understand. I have to ask. I will. An I will answer you. Any more questions, Akhi? Okay. Yeah, finish. Barakallah fiq. So Abu Yusuf's uh, third question. He is asking about the threshold known as nisab of gold. So what amount of gold do I have to possess in order to give zakat? The answer is scholars say that if you have 85 grams of 24 karat gold or more, then you are uh, uh, ordered and obliged to give 2.5% of that as zakat. Can you elaborate? Definitely. If I have 85 grams 
oh, my wife has 85 grams, we would be rich. But this is not the point. If the gold is 24, as in the gold bars uh, uh, that they sell, and it's 85 grams or more, I have to calculate the value, give 2.5% of it. But if my wife has a necklace that, and few other jewelries that in weight, they are 85 grams, but some is 20 carats, some is seven, uh, 18, some is 16, some is 14. In this case, this did not reach the threshold. How? It is 85 grams. Yes, but it's not 85 grams of 24 carats of gold. If you take this to the jeweler uh, shop and he would calculate, he would tell you, okay, this one that has 20 grams, uh, 20 carats, means that there are four uh, uh, missing, which is compensated by copper or other minerals. So the 85 mixed grams of gold is equivalent to 70. And this means that you don't have to give zakat on that. Once it reaches 85 of 24 carat gold, in this case, you must give zakat for that. Uh, Mustafa from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing, sir? Good evening to you. I'm fine. Zakallah khair for asking. What can I do for you? Okay, my question is, uh, which is the correct ruling? When one is going for sujood in salah, do we work the hands first on the ground or the knees? Okay, any more questions? Yes, and then if, if you, uh, you, are, you are, when you meet, uh, when you don't meet the congregation, Jama in the mosque, that is maybe for a first prayer, do you pray in the mosque or you go home and pray to make up for the missed prayer? Okay, any more questions? Okay, I will answer you, inshallah. Okay, Brother Ajmal from Denmark says that if a woman who's pregnant or breastfeeding, what should she do in Ramadan? If she fears for her safety or for her child's safety, not finding enough milk or not being nourished sufficiently enough when she's fasting, in this case, Allah has given her the exemption. She can break her fast. She can skip fasting Ramadan, until the obstacles are removed, may, maybe a year, two years, Allah knows, then she's obliged to make up for the missed days. There's no feeding, there's no uh, expiation other than that. His second question, that he works for the post, and sometimes he's ordered to deliver uh, uh, parcels that contain haram objects, DVDs, uh, liquor, uh, pork, I, uh, is it permissible for him? The answer is no. It's, this is not permissible for, for you. Is my earning haram for this particular trip or route? Yes, it is. But other than that, if you are delivering halal things, then this is halal. Your earning of this particular haram thing is haram. So what to do? If it is possible, try to have an agreement with the management that you can only deliver halal things and you will compensate them through overtime that you will not pay.